Hello and welcome to Set Theory, a bite-sized lecture series. In these videos, you'll get a conceptual overview of set theory that doesn't take all day. If you're new to this channel, be sure to check out the playlist with all the videos in this series, which I'll link to in a card in the corner of the screen. Today, we're going to learn about orderings. As the name suggests, orderings are ways to take elements in a set and put them in some sort of order, where elements go before or after each other. One example of an ordering is the ordering less than on the real numbers. The set R of real numbers doesn't have an inherent order on its own, it's just a bunch of numbers floating around. But if we define what it means for one number to be less than another number, we've suddenly placed all these floating numbers on a strictly ordered line that goes forward and backward. We already order things all the time in daily life, and we've been using the idea of ordering intuitively this whole time. The reason why we're explicitly defining ordering now is because we want to use them to define ordinals, which will let us talk about sizes of infinity as if they're just another type of number. But let's save that for the next lesson. The first thing to understand is that all orderings are relations. For a refresher on relations, click the card above to watch lesson 4. But basically, an ordering is a set of ordered pairs, each of which orders one element before the other. For example, take the set S equals the set 1, 2, and 3. The ordering less than on S would be the set of ordered pairs 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. It organizes the elements in S so that you can pick any two elements and know which one is less than the other. Less than isn't the only possible ordering. For example, if we had a set of 100 people, we could define the relation T, where the ordered pair XY is in T if and only if person X is taller than person Y. That said, for reasons which will become clear, we generally think of orderings as sort of equivalent to less than. For an ordering R, X, R, Y generally means that X comes before Y, or X is less than Y in our ordering. There are three basic types of orderings, and each one is sort of a subset of the last. So the most general type of ordering is a partial ordering, certain types of partial orderings are called linear orderings, and certain types of linear orderings are called well orderings. Let's start with partial orderings. A partial ordering is a relation R meeting the following two conditions. First, R is a transitive relation. So if X R Y and Y R Z, then it must be true that X R Z. An easier way to think about this might be if X is less than Y and Y is less than Z, then X is less than Z. And second, R is irreflexive. So it is never the case that X R X. Again, this translates to, it is never the case that x is less than x, which makes sense. We want x to be equal to x, not less than itself. Partial orderings are named as such because they are not required to encompass the entire set that they're applied to. That is, in a partial ordering, you can have two elements that aren't related at all. They just coexist peacefully without one being less than the other. This means that partial orderings can have sections that are completely separate from one another. Additionally, sections of a partial ordering can branch off or merge. This is in contrast to a linear ordering, where every element must be related to every other element in the set, so every element must fall neatly into a single unbroken line. One example of a partial ordering is the strict subset relation, which looks like the subset relation without the line underneath. It's pretty much what it sounds like. A set A is a strict subset of a set B. If every element of A is also in B, and B has at least one element that's not in A, so B actually has more stuff in it than A. Consider the strict subset relation, also called strict inclusion, on the power set P of 1, 2, 3. Let's actually list out all the elements in P. So P is the set composed of the empty set, the set 1, the set 2, the set 3, the set 1, 2, the set 1, 3, the set 2, 3, and the set 1, 2, 3. Now, we'd like to order these sets according to strict inclusion. So there are some unbroken lines. For example, this path from the empty set to 1, 2, 3. This path translates into the empty set is a strict subset of the set 2 is a strict subset of the set 1, 2, is a strict subset of the set 1, 2, 3. But there are also a bunch of sets that aren't related to each other at all. For example, the set 1 and the set 2 aren't connected because neither is a strict subset of the other. That's what makes this a partial ordering only. 
If a partial ordering happens to relate every element in a set, it's called a linear ordering. A linear ordering R on a set A is defined as a partial ordering that also satisfies something called trichotomy on A. That is, for any X and Y in A, exactly one of the following statements is true. Either X R Y, Y R X, or X is equal to Y. This condition makes sure that for every pair of elements in A, one of those elements is less than the other, or else they're the same element. As we saw before, one example is the usual less than ordering on the real numbers. Under a linear ordering, all the elements must be organized in a single unbroken line, where each one is either less than, greater than, or equal to each of the others. Finally, a well ordering on a set A is a linear ordering with the further property that every non-empty subset of A has a least element. So for example, while the less than ordering on the reals is a linear ordering, it is not a well ordering, because there isn't one real number that's less than every other real number. On the other hand, less than on the set of positive integers is a well ordering, because every possible subset of the positive integers has some minimum value. You should check out the example problems, which are linked in the description, for a more detailed explanation of why this is a well ordering. Note that being a well-ordering doesn't actually depend on the ordering, the relation itself. The only difference between a linear ordering and a well-ordering is the set that it's applied to. So that's how less than is not a well-ordering on the real numbers, but it is a well-ordering on the positive integers. It turns out that the condition that every non-empty subset of A has a least element can be distilled into two simpler conditions. First, A must have a least element itself, Graphically, that would sort of look like A being either a line segment or a ray, rather than a line that goes in both directions. So put simply, this is because A is always a subset of itself, and every subset of A must have a least element, so A must have a least element. Second, A must be countable. You can click on the card above for fresher, uncountable sets, but basically, you must be able to step up from each element to the next one in some definable way. That's why less than on the set of non-negative reals, for example, isn't a well-ordering, even though the set of non-negative reals has a least value, zero. Take the subset of the non-negative reals of all of them which are greater than one. Since we can get infinitely close to the number one while still remaining greater than it, this subset does not have a least value. And once again, you can check out the example problems linked in the description for a more detailed explanation of this. And that concludes the 10th video of this video series about set theory. I hope you enjoyed it, let me know what you think, and if there's anything that would make it better. Thanks for watching, see you in two weeks to learn about ordinals.